Welcome aboard, sports fans. We're at Face to Face Games uh, for the Prototype Toronto League semi-final match one. Absolutely. Coming to you live, I'm Timbo Slice, and my man to the left here is the Swarm Master, Mr. Devin Monkhouse. And uh, on screen, we've got Graham Schofield, uh, hot off his top 16 finish at the Naboo Open, and uh, Lucas Crosby, who's uh, usually tearing it up on Vassal. You can find him as uh, Luke Cross online. And uh, we were commenting just before we went live here, uh, there is just a ridiculous amount of acrylic rewards on the table right now. We got uh, Nationals 2014 target locks, focus and evade tokens, the new system open shields and target locks. It's uh, regionals dice from two years. Both of them full sets of regionals dice. I don't quite Absolutely. know how to put this, Dev, but they're both kind of a big deal. I don't know. People uh, know them. They might be they might be good at X-wing, Tim. I'm not sure. I wonder if their apartments smell of rich mahogany. Uh, I've been to Graham's apartment. I can inform you it does not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a look at uh, let's talk a little bit about the prototype Toronto League and where we're at in the season before we get into their list. How does that sure, sound? that sounds good to me. We are in season seven of the prototype Toronto League. As uh, last week, we watched one of the quarterfinal matches, Alan Fung versus Stephen Moss, mm -hmm. and uh, the winner of this game will go on to play. Uh, the winner of the other semifinal game, which is Alan Fung versus our Lord and Savior, the national Sable, champion, national champion Alan Fung versus Jeff Asiri, who was the top-ranked Imperial player yep. at the System Open. And now he was weekend. flying Tidy Vessery, Tidy, yeah, Meta -D. shattering Tidy with backdraft with adaptability to so up to an eight, up to an eight. I forget what his third ship was. It was a Mega Leader. It was a Mega Leader. Yeah. Oh, there you go. All eights. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was Carnor or, or who. No, it was the Hateful Eights. Yeah. And uh, he Quite was, a list. Well, he, he finished 25th over the weekend, and that was the top-ranked Imperial player. All 24 yeah. of the top rank were either Rebel or Scum. Absolutely. It was pretty nuts. But, uh, yeah, no, um, we're going to be talking about uh, the Prototype Toronto League as well. So we're in Season 7. Um, started a few years ago, and so far we've had six champions. Um, Mike Perese was yep. uh, year one. Hell of a player. Won Great a store player. championship with a Seek. With a the, Seek. With the old rules. Whoa. Did a two-hour store final against Pete Smith. Finished in the top eight with you at Naboo. Yeah. And uh, What a player. Yeah, he soloed, uh, soloed Poe with uh, Sirisu. And then moving on to our... our uh, Keeping the uh, the name dropping going, we've got season two champion uh, was Josh Dirksen, yeah, who is the creator of the Heroes of the Atari cluster, founder and conceptualized yeah. the series of the, the Heroes of the Atari cluster. Uh, season three, we had Lucas Keys, who's a great player as well, plays with a lot of us every now and again. Yeah. Um, season four was Alan I'm, Fung. I don't, I don't recognize that name. Has he really done anything? I've heard him before. It's, apparently, he has know. nice hair. I, I I that's the rumor, but I've yet to see it look, you know, perfect. Now, it's, uh, just to pull you away before no, I know uh, Season 5 is a very, very interesting winner. But uh, Lucas is deployed very coyly in the, the top there. I mean, that's, they're all on a unique angle and a little bit. Now, this is maybe where his, uh, his vassal experience comes in. I love the twenty. I love the twenty degree angle start from uh, from Lucas. It really helps you take advantage of the bank maneuvers straight out of the gate in either direction, really, um, giving you some pretty sharp turning vectors after turn two or turn three. Yeah, uh, definitely a testament to his experience. To your point on Vassal, or just the number of games that he's had on the table under his belt. Absolutely. But yeah. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, Graham and Lucas's lists? Yeah. Since you're the uh, the sitting Imperial expert, can you shed any they're, light? They're jumping right into it. Now, Whisper's very, very expensive. This is the uh, most expensive Whisper I've seen. But he while. only has to worry about Quick Draw. This is true. Right? So he gets behind Quick, gets beside Quick Draw, really. Right? Yeah. He's uh, probably in good shape if he can keep, keep on his flank. Now, Graham's gone into this match with a two-point initiative bid. And... Um, I think he was expecting aces. Lucas has been flying up until I believe this point, all generics, all season. I don't think that there's an ace amongst uh, the ships he's run. 
So Lucas is one of the most terrifying jank uh, players you can come up against because every time he brings just a bag of stuff mm. and sets it across from the table, you look at it and you think to yourself, oh, look, a bunch of Z95s, maybe a Y-Wing. Now, he flew a Wild Space Fringer into the top 16 of, let's just of the last Toronto Regionals. Let's just pause on that for a moment, folks. That is the PS2 generic YT-25. That's not Dash Render. I can go over rocks and stuff. That is a PS2 Wild Space Fringer with, I yeah. believe, Ray Crew and a heavy laser cannon without the title. Right. So you don't can, need the title. No. 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 Who needs to be able to fire You cannon? can barrel roll for a shot. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Speaking of barrel rolling, here's uh, here's Graham. Sort of, uh, I was wondering with the Inquisitor being up that far up table, but I guess he's bringing everything together. Oh, but Devin, have you not noticed that that's not the Inquisitor? Oh, that's true. It is uh, Valen Rudor. So just to recap for our, anybody who's watching our stream, a uh, big proponent of the PTL is educating new players on how to get some fun and exciting lists, which is why our mantra is that you can't repeat named pilots regardless of if you make the top cut. So uh, it stands to reason that Graham is uh, either used the Inquisitor or saving the Inquisitor. So mm -hmm. just to recap, Devin, can you tell us what Valen Rudor's pilot ability is? So Valen Rudor's pilot ability is after he is shot, he may perform an action. Really? Now, they they did FAQ it so that you could not reposition between the TLT shots, but it's still quite an interesting ability, and I expect that uh, he will be caught, be able to get evade target lock for his to use his juke with the title, and then uh, pick up a focus or a reposition after after being shot, either for the next turn or for to get a better position against an ace. Well, it's interesting here because uh, Graham's list, uh, Whisper Valen with Juke, and then a classical Mega Leader at 26 points, stands to reason that he's um, anticipating being able to utilize stripping and taking advantage of a lack of focus tokens because Whisper will shoot at PS9, and then you've got a PS8 shooting with Juke, which yep. stands to reason they're probably either going to spend a focus or not have one. Yep. And then you've got the PS6 Valen. Who shoot also with Juke. Yeah, and then looks like the only crossovers they've got are at 6 for Valen, and then he's got a crossover at 8 for Omega Leader versus Tomax. Yeah. And then the Whisper Quick Draw crossover at nine. And then of course... Uh, so all of the ships actually are paired up. Almost. Yeah, the only crossover yeah. that doesn't happen is the poor Academy tie at PS1 there, yeah. right? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, this is, this is gonna be a very interesting match. I played uh, a list similar to Luke's at the Hangar Bay at uh, Naboo, and the, the Draw There Fire, Tomax, Ben Bomber, mix is, is pretty funky because no one ever really wants to shoot quick draw and you're you're forcing them to uh, to make a decision that shooting anybody within range one of him is like shooting him. It's interesting so. that you should note on that Devin because I too had one of those moments where I was playing a Ukrainian gentleman. He was one of the uh, the top yeah. ranked Armada players. Um, mm. he, apparently he came across uh, our friend Victor from VWTV Live, uh, Christian and some of the other guys who went to Worlds for Armada. He was playing a three ship list. It was a PS8 Tomax with missile. Yeah. Uh, and then he had backdraft up to eight as well. And his third ship was a Kylo Ren piloted shuttle with draw their fire. The on new Upsilon. The new Upsilon shuttle, Kylo Ren the pilot, and draw their fire as the EPT so that yeah. it actually puts the control of when you can assign the condition card back into your hands because you can choose whether or not to draw See, one I, of those cards. I disagree with that ruling because Kylo Ren specifically says when hit by an attack and I don't I don't think draw their fire is an attack. I think we, I want to see an FAQ on on that uh, on that interaction. There were some fun noodle scratchers that came up over the weekend. I tell you, the For judging sure. staff in Naboo were absolutely top quality, yeah. but there were just some interactions that you don't see uh, on the horizon, and when they come up on the table, yeah. sometimes everybody just looks at each other with that, you know, that Wookiee expression. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of, one of my favorite moments from the weekend is uh, Eric Z's playing his top eight match against uh, Paul Heaver. Oh my! He goes, "I'm going to launch the shuttle," and then he looks up at Paul and goes, "I don't know how to launch the shuttle. Do you?" And Paul Heaver looks at him back and goes, uh, I have no idea. idea. Does anybody know how to launch the Hand shuttle? goes up, judge. <laughs> now, uh, that's pretty coy from Graham, decloaking uh, downboard and, and sort of uh, slow rolling a little bit for, for Echo, or for Whisper instead of, I suppose, uh, trying to flank, get in. Uh, Graham got his trustworthy uh, decloak symbols written on his thumbs. Uh, now, he, now, Graham flew 
three phantoms into the the top eight of the last Rochester regionals. You did. That was oh, last year. Last year. Yeah. yeah. With his trusty decloak reminder on the thumbs. No, I think it's fair to say, Devin, that if Lucas is the the swarm jank, uh, if that's his mo, yeah. then Graham would unquestionably be the phantom uh, guy in the PTL. Phantom menace, perhaps. Yeah, phantom menace within the PTL per se. Well, why do you pun us so much, Devin? Honestly? Well. Yeah, they melt his brain though, as as I feel. Phantoms do melt your brain. Yeah. It's true. Just it's... having to do that that multi tier level planning. Yeah. Be able to. I'm gonna think you're gonna go this way, so I'll decloak, and then after that, I also have to plan my move. Strikers are a little simpler, but they melt your brain pretty hard. Now you can see uh, Lucas back here, consistently bumping Sabak to slow roll with him. Very interesting. I normally just don't run him with uh, ailerons. Uh, sort of keep him in the swarm, but uh, well, Lucas think... here getting controlled bumps every turn until he can unleash the the power that is Pierce Sabak, the cruise missile that is Pierce Sabak. Yeah, and the, and you're absolutely right. I mean, Sabak has a tremendous amount of offensive capability, but uh, is it fair to say that he's also considered somewhat of a glass cannon? Like if you don't, if you just feed Sabak to your opponent, he'll do one round of damage, and then he's just a striker. Like he's he's just there. Strikers still throw a lot of dice. Yo, One thing I like point. to do with my swarm is is scare them with pure sabak, and then you, they shoot at him, range two or three, then he bombs in, and he got four dice to turn before. Now he's at range one. He's still getting four dice. You did him damage, but his uh, damage output isn't diminished at all. So from a strategy perspective here, it looks like Graham has declared his flank. He's declared that he's going either uh, through the two middles and the uh, through the two rocks in the middle, or up around the top of the board. And he's going to leave uh, the if you're looking at the screen, top left hand corner um, as a possible approach vector for Sabak. Sure, I'm, Graham has a very positional piece in Whisper, right? And he's trying to set up a line of ships across the bottom of the board, right? While trying to pull Lucas down in column, yeah. if that makes sense, right? And he's sort of achieving that at this moment. Um, to try and engage maybe half or two-thirds of Lucas's list with his entire list. Uh, I don't know if that'll be possible uh, with Sabak being so quick. Uh, Sabak but, is super quick with those ailerons. Lucas has blocked him up and bottled him up in that corner. And while he's quick, he's not that quick. They lack a lot of the really... The maneuvers that would have made them great ships. Yeah. Like, the the striker's a good ship. To be a great ship, it needed a 5 forward and a hard 3. Well, all right. I, it, it, I mean, a fi what you mean is a 5 forward after the aileron. Let's just, yes, absolutely. Let's just clarify something for some of the newer viewers, folks. Yeah. If you're looking at a tie striker dial, yeah. one of the things you'll notice is the fastest straight maneuver they can do is the 3 forward. Right. And you can see that the Lucas hasn't been doing the ailerons before, right? right? But if you're uh, pointed, if he's you're, just if you're setting pointed, up a bump and a bump. If you're pointed straight, though, yeah. you do the one forward aileron mm -hmm. and then the three forward. Yeah, that's the same as doing a five straight yeah. on, on the spot if you didn't have that aileron. Yeah. So, I mean, to make to give the the striker a four straight or a five straight on their dial would almost make them insanely fast. Tim. Does the Shadowcaster have a 5 forward? We're not going to talk and about that. And a boost? That. No, the Shadowcaster doesn't have a boost unless does, you give it an engine upgrade. Does the, does the Decimator have a 3 bank and a boost? The Decimator does have the possibility of an engine upgrade. Okay. Does the Shadowcaster have a 5 forward and a boost? As a white 5 forward. And a boost. And it doesn't have an engine. No. Well, if you put an engine on it, it boosts. Well, most Ketsu players play with engine. Most Asajj players don't. So, so, Tim, can I do a 5 forward with a Shadowcaster, and if I have Burnout Slam, Burnout Slam for another 5 forward, getting me across the board. You could indeed, Devin. I think a 5-forward, right. 5-forward five five would actually get you too far across the board. You so might now, even be pointed at the board. Are edge. you telling me that an extra distance one on a striker would break the game? But you're, you're forgetting one crucial piece of, of, of uh, important information, and that's that Imperial ships suck. So. I, that is a fact. <laughs> As a long-time Imperial Swarm player. And as a long-time VCX 5K. <laughs> I just, like, that... Well, before the Shadowcaster, when the 5K was the technically the fastest maneuver in the game, because you had the big ship oh, doing the 5, just oh. back and forth. You ever game. do the Lebo boost into the 5K? Oh, I've done the Lebo boost. <laughs> just Lebo crew on the Ghost is <laughs> nothing more satisfying. I've got a boost and take an eye on for next turn. Uh, Pre-boost, advanced sensors, boost, 5K. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, we got some uh, construction going on in the back. Just uh, if you hear it, just know that 
face to face games, investing in only the finest uh, IKEA furniture. IKEA furniture for uh, their uh, their patrons here. I hear there is zero regrets about furnishing an entire store in IKEA furniture. It's cost effective, is it? And apparently, the person who picked up the furniture got a free breakfast. Oh, or a wow. breakfast for one dollar. I imagine that. Uh, so we got three different directions that Whisper can decloak. Uh, Graham's been fairly well, conservative with his maneuvers so far. He's blocked his forward. Decloak. And he's, his left would be. I'm calling it right. Really into a rock. So. Oh yeah. I mean. There we go. We're rolling backwards, being very conservative again. And uh, let's see where the academy's going. <clears throat> You know, for anybody who's just getting into X-Wing, Devin, I think one of the things that it's important to note is just simply how much fun it can be to fly. Here's Lucas setting up a like three bank saying. on yep. the uh, TIE Fighter for the next turn. The oh, Strikers yeah. are super fun to fly. My, my, uh, yeah, and the Phantom. Like, what I was I was trying to lean towards how much fun the Phantom is to fly, meaning competitive, yeah. top-tier X-Wing. Now it's tough to actually take a Phantom and have a good day because there's so many stress mechanics yeah. or tractor beams or any of that other nonsense. But Barrel roll on the tie. Interesting. Interesting yeah. choice. It looks like... Getting uh, buddy-buddy with the asteroid. He's going to probably use that for some defensive modification, add a green die to his shot. I don't know if there'll be any shots this round. But uh, maybe he's setting up a bump with Pierce Sabak. There's the aileron boost. Aileron boost followed by, yeah. what, a three turn, you think, here? The three turn doesn't exist on the dial, so a one oh, or a two. But maybe a bank? What has he pulled in? Yeah, too the hard. Two turn. Yeah. Much like the, the... Give him a wide flank approach factor the following turn. Interesting. Much like the Phantom, the most common use maneuver on a striker dial is the hard one. Makes sense. Barrel yeah. rolling. See, Lucas is, is, has seen that uh, Graham's trying to pull him into attacking column, and he's being able to flank out with Sabak. I don't know if he's moved him too far or not, but... Uh, Do we know who placed this rock here, the rock in the uh, the furthest right in the middle? I believe that was Lucas. You believe it was Lucas? I believe it was Lucas. The rocks are interestingly set up. It really kind of splits up your approach vectors, no matter which way you come at it. Um, makes it yeah. tough to keep your guns on one target. Yeah. Why is... Uh, I mean, keeping your guns on the same target is an incredibly important part of any X-Wing match strategy, right, Tim? Yeah, of course. It's all about token stripping, right? And uh, red dice hit more than green dice evade. So the more red dice you put on a ship, the better. Is that why you usually just bring, like, a butt-ton of ships and just throw red dice at them? Yeah, that worked really well in the big ship meta. Uh, less so less so now. <clears throat> uh, reposition aces are really tough on the TIE Swarm. Whisper sort of put it down dash is uh, pretty tough on tie swarms yeah, he's a slippery bugger that one yeah people keep talking about the swarm coming back but it's not going to come back without new pilots so that's one of the things that happened to me on the weekend um, the Toronto Regionals 2017 champion Thomas Ferreira and a bunch of his mates were down in Syracuse as well no, they didn't come on the party bus. Did they, they even know about it? I don't know if they knew. I, they said they knew about it. Uh, I think they had their own plans, though. Um, one of the mates that Thomas came down with was playing Dash Miranda. I got matched up Disgusting. against him in, like, round five. And he, he beat me like I stole something. Like, he just he just brutalized me. That's a, that's a rough list. Well, especially for my matchup. Like, I had an Asajj and, uh, and two TLTs. So he's just like, how about I'm never at range two of your Shadowcaster? <laughs> Um, and yep. just whittle you down there. I really like what um, Lucas is up to here. He's really casting a wide net and be able to choose which one of those pieces of Graham's he's going to he delete. Can just, he can just kill box in one and turn here. So describe that a little more and tell me why it's a Mega Leader. Well, a Mega Leader is the one in the middle of the board right now. And Lucas has the potential either this round or next, to close a box around a Mega Leader and get all four of his guns on that one piece. Mm -hmm. The reason a Mega Leader is not a bad uh, target priority is because math works out that if Omega Leader is the last piece that your opponent has on the board and you only have one piece left yourself, then Omega, um, Omega Leader's gonna target lock you. Graham's taking a while to decide if he's gonna cloak. Interesting. So it looks like Whisper might be out of range of one or both of Lucas's pieces when he's that far away. 
Um, so Graham's deciding in action whether or not he wants to be able to decloak the following turn or maybe even just stay where he is and do a one turn left and, and try yep, and catch there's the cloak. Of, and there's the cloak. I was about to say, you know, what's the point of having decloak written on your thumbs? If you're not going to cloak? If you're not going to cloak. <laughs> we have a shot here. Quick we'll draw on uh, Omega Leader. Okay, so we got a range three. Uh, that obstructed. Ome Omega Leader has no target lock, so Quick Draw can mod their dice, or her dice, I should say. Oh, and no. Omega Leader had to barrel roll this turn, remember, to avoid the rock next turn. That's so. true. So Lucas has rolled, uh, uh, looks like a hit crit. Now, Lucas, I, I think he's been practicing rolling his dice, because that's quite a good roll. It's a very good roll. Looks like Omega Leader evades it cleanly. There you go. Now, Quick Draw's fire control system will trigger with those absolutely sexy uh, Nationals. Uh, 2014 Nationals. That was in Hamilton. And it looks like Omega Leader's got a range three on the Academy tie. I hear shooting an Academy tie fighter. Oftentimes a very good idea. Now, interestingly, I love that Lucas has got both fire control system and targeting nice synchronizer on, uh, on the quick draw. That is a very evade TIE fighter. That is a super evade TIE fighter. You want to give, give, why don't we just pause on this for a moment and talk about tar targeting synchronizer fire control sure. on the TIE SF for a second here. So I've got a high PS ship. I'm going to shoot first. I'm yeah. going to establish a target lock with my fire control system, whether, I do, whether or not I do any damage whatsoever. And then targeting synchronizer just says that if another one of the friendly ships has the target that I have target locked as the target of their attack, then that ship may spend my target lock as theirs. So, so long that, as they're within range one and two. No, there's no uh, there's no yeah. range on targeting synchronizer. There is range one to two. I'm pretty sure. So the the person using it, using your target lock, must be in range one to two of you. Of you? I looked at it. Just before oh, this okay. match, shows uh, how much I've shown. Just to right. just to just, just to double check on it, so but this, absolutely. This is why Tomax is so close to Quick Draw, right? Yeah, Quick Draw sets him up. Tomax knocks him down with the homing. That's great. Do we though. have homing missiles? No, we've got proton torpedoes. Proton torpedoes. Old classic. But that means that Tomax can move. He can take a focus, and then he gets the free target lock, so he gets two mods. Three mods. He's got guidance. He's ships. got guidance ships as well, and he's got the crack shot. Five, four mods. Infinitely crack shotting. That's a dead ship, no matter what. That's, that sounds like a dead whisper. Yeah. That sounds like. Two hits and a crit, threw onto threw onto shields. Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, Lucas has the opportunity here to fake uh, Graham into thinking that he's going to try and go for Oli mm -hmm. or Mega Leader, but really he can just one forward both of those ships next turn and have two uninhibited shots on Whisper, unless Whisper does something. If kind if of Whisper goes left up board, right then, and he only does a a one forward or he does a two forward with with quick draw yeah. and there's a, a, a opportunity there for Graham to get around him which I think would be I don't know if Lucas would uh, allow for that now Graham gave himself initiative so that Whisper would be able to shoot and cloak so the idea of decloaking two forward and then a hard three from the Phantom in order to try no, he's moving after a quick draw Graham took initiative or he gave it to... He took initiative or he gave it we'll, to... We'll get a confirmation when they start moving ships. Sure. But uh, he, Lucas had moved Quick Draw before Whisper moved and took an action. Okay. Yeah, we'll just... Uh, we'll get a clarification on uh, on who has initiative here. Sorry, we should have probably done that before. I'm, I'm going to call... The, You're calling the Quick Draw has uh, initiative? No, I'm calling the Academy Pilot's going to do a hard three and try and barrel roll to bump... Omega Leader is what's going. I think it's going to happen. Okay, but we'll see. That's a very powerful move. I'm really curious as to what Graham's going to do here. I Maybe he'll just focus. I, 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 I love construction that they've arranged. Do this right next to us. Come to IKEA, where you can get the breakfast Lucas, for one dollar. Lucas does have initiative. Okay, so, so that, Quick Draw's moving first, so Whisper can arc dodge, which is so, more important to him than cloaking. I guess so. Yeah, I mean it's 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 risky when you're a Phantom player to be able to give you. Uh, your opponent initiative and in trade being able to cloak for arc dodging it just i think speaks volumes to graham's experience with the with the tie phantom well and it's in every ps bracket right for for graham he can arc dodge with valen rudor over sabak he can arc dodge with omega leader over a tomax and there we go he's decloaking the other way so he's not fainting into that uh that kill box and if there's one thing we all know, the most reliable defense dice you can roll is not getting shot at. Is not getting shot at. 
We have a lot of great hair in the PTL. Look at that. Two great heads of hair. It is two great heads of hair. I love the, uh, normally when, it, when Lucas goes to like premiere events, he wears like a really, really cool like baseball cap or something yeah. like that. Speaking of baseball caps, if you come to the PTL Open, we have baseball caps as swag this uh, for this Open. Wait, Devin, what's the PTL Open? Uh, no barrel roll. No barrel but roll? The hard three. In. Oh, interesting. There we go. That's what you do with TIE Fighters. You do hard three. In. You do hard three barrel roll? Yeah, 100%. So for those of you who aren't aware, uh, the Tr Prototype Toronto League is holding one of the first open events uh, in, in quite some time in Canada. I think um, it's the only non-FFG X-Wing tournament of a premier scale in Canada yet so far. Now just because it's not actually organized and um, put on by FFG, by no means uh, says anything about the uh, the prize availability for the it game. absolutely does and you know what it means it means the prizes are going to be better oh there yeah there you, there go. you go yeah buddy so uh, just to anybody who's not aware there's uh, information about the PTL Open on Facebook it's going to be happening on April the twenty second and twenty third we're uh, less than one month away from it and yep. the excitement is building especially because I can now confirm that there are two thousand and seventeen regionals templates and on the line in dice in the prize and pool. dice I can confirm that one uh, one PTL member was very generous in their uh, I don't know who that would be Tim no, I mean, I just, uh, that, that person's a stand up is just a, a fool he is a fool why would you give away all that free stuff why, when why? you can just sell it on eBay we're giving everything away for free. we're giving free painted ships books you name it we're giving it away yeah no, the, the, some of the paint jobs that I've seen are, are stunning, just unbelievable. Now, uh, interesting. Pierce the Bach there barrel rolled, right past the asteroid in order to set up a trick shot, and he's not gonna modify his dice at all. He's just gonna pray and hope that he just rolls a lot. Well, so. five dice with uh, with the trick shot bonus on yeah. Valen Rudor when all Valen has is auto thrusters and the evade token? No, that's range two. Probably no auto thrusters. You reckon that's range two? I reckon that's range two. Obstructed. I'll put, a, I'll put a shiny American quarter that that's range three on it. Oh, uh, yeah? And, we'll I have, and I have some shiny American quarters left from the weekend. Uh, you well, that. you need to use those when you're in uh, Carolinas. Oh, my lord. Yeah. So what do we got here? We got Lucas deciding now, what he wants to do with Tomax. He, he's, he's, he's trying to figure it out, right? He's going to focus. He's got it in his hand. He's got his focus. Because he wants to use the uh, targeting synchronizer. He's got a beautiful... And like I said, Lucas is very practiced in rolling dice. Yeah. So. Okay, so we've got a three straight from a Mega Leader, which means he may not escape torpedo range. Unless he does some... No. I mean, he, he can barrel roll left, but that's going to be tight. He's target locking pure Sabacc. Uh, Interesting. And we should actually be measuring to make sure that that's actually in target rock range, but... That would also provide us with the information about whether you owe me 25 cents or not, Tim. This is true. Uh, I don't like this position at all for Graham. I don't think that this, this is... This is ballsy. I like that he's trying to get Whisper behind uh, Lucas's aces, but at the same time, if he's trading that position for I, giving them Omega Leader... It's I also good. feel like we should appreciate that Lucas has four arcs on Omega Leader, and currently Graham has no arcs on any of Lucas's ships. Uh, that's not... It's about to change with Whisper. I, uh, I understand. I would say that Valen probably has arc on the uh, on the Academy tie, maybe. I feel like that is the most important part you gotta kill of Academy Lucas's tie, list. The Academy, the Academy tie is... He's not hanging out with the big boys because he's, like, bottom of his class. He's, like, the... He's, he's like got, the a, got a range two on Omega Leader. Oh, then focus for... It looks like hit, hit, crit. Good dice. Great dice. Uh, great dice. Spends the evade. So Mega Leader loses a shield, takes a damage. Takes a crit. crit. And the damage is... Uh, yeah. Our, our, uh, our spies will figure that out eventually. Yeah. Look at that. Nope, you got a little bit. Range 3 obstructed on Tomax Bren. It's not great for the first dice exchange. Uh, well, he's going to shoot Tomax, do a damage. Draw, he's yeah. going to. So Lucas got, is going to draw their fire onto Quick Draw. We got, we got four dice from that, and it looks like Quick Draw is going to spend his. Fo or sorry, Tomax is going to spend his focus token and take no take damage. No, take no damage? Yeah. That's absurd. So Whisper can now cloak. Now, Whisper does not gain a, far, a target lock, of course, because Graham has opted to go with Sensor Jammer, yeah. not Fire Control System. Here, here come the. Here come the missiles. <clears throat> now, regardless of Tomax wanted to keep his focus token or not, he would have had to spend it because Whisper shot at him with Hotshot Copilot. That's fair. Yeah. 
Anybody who's watching the screen will also notice that Graham is not using the FFG standard Hotshot Copilot card. He's using one of the Carolina crates. The Carolina crates, many of the awesome. And that is a deleted Omega, Omega leader. leader. Yeah. Although Lucas has reminded him that uh, it was he was PS killed at the same time. Okay. So he does get uh, to shoot at simultaneous fire. Simultaneous fire. Now, Lucas didn't have to remind him about that, Devin, did he? No, he did not. That's just another perfect example of the fly casual policy of the PTL, if you ask me. Spend it, spend it. There we you go, buddy. You want to spend it. There you go. Uh, one, one hit. hit. Oh, so many dice for Sabak. He must be loving that. One evade. There he goes. That's all he needed. Look at those. Those are great. Those are uh, those target locks there with the two stripes. That's the that's the six and X target locks for uh, for Naboo. There you go. No. Do we have that argument? Look, on, uh, look, range two. Range two. So, folks, it looks like I owe Devin a quarter. There you go. Which is an American quarter, and folks, that's 31 cents. Oh, my gosh. We got four dice from Sabak. No, nothing. That's Nothing that's, from nobody. That's, you know, I didn't like Graham's positioning. But his dice aren't helping him. He got auto thrusters. Oh, it looks like yeah, Graham two and a crit. May have That's looked like a... uh, Graham may have oh, auto thrusters there. That looks to me like hard turns are red. I think I saw that. Um, but uh... hard turns red? No, loose stabilizer means that he can't take actions until he clears it. Oh, I hear that's a good one. It's really easy to to, to deal with. Well, especially when you're a tie advanced prototype and you rely on your target lock giving you two actions. Yeah. Well, he was able to, to focus, <coughs> at least, and shoot at an academy pilot. Yeah. Like I said, this is the academy pilot, the key to, uh, and rerolling with the target lock missing. Graham's dice just not being friendly to him at all, putting I mean, no damage through on, on the, the academy uh, pilot. On the academy pilot. Yeah. Definitely a bit of a gut punch there. Academy pilot shooting back. Two hits. Now, I, when I was saying Lucas practices rolling dice. Looks like he practices pretty good. I feel like Graham could do with some more dice practice. Perhaps he hasn't trained these dice well enough. Perhaps more rolling, or I've also heard punishing your dice in front of the other ones. Perhaps with a hammer. I would, just, I would just yell profanities at them. Mm. Along mm. like similar like Happy Gilmore, yeah, uh, just yelling at his golf yeah. ball. That sometimes works. You know, like you you, you silly silly die. Why, um, can, why can't you roll? Why can't you roll crits? So Valen Rudor doing another action. After he boosted, can he do that? No, nope. uh, we're reminded that the uh, the crit is in effect, and he can't do the. Uh, yep. The thing, so what he's going to use his free action for when he's shot to, at is to get rid of the loose stabilizer. Hey, you know, why not? I means he's free next turn to. Well, it's either do that or he does nothing, right? Because loose stabilizer says you can't do actions except right. on damage cards. I, but I mean, as a power for Valen Rudor, that's a pretty good power. Being able to be like, nope, let's deal with that crit now, and next turn he's free to do more actions. That's, well, especially uh, if it was like, a, especially if it was like a. A structural damage where your agility goes down or yeah. weapons failure or something like that. Just giving the opportunity to clear that crit ahead of time, yeah. He has now sort of given away his plans to Lucas a little bit, but I think he's pointed in a board direction. I'm sure he's headed that way anyway. Although now Sabak has to come around, go left, round the asteroid. So he's going to aileron boost left and and uh, probably we'll see a hard two, hard three. Yeah, our left. Hard two. Our left, his right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Hard, hard, sorry, hard one the or The direction hard two. that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's going to land on the rock. He's not Paul Heaver. He doesn't purposely put ships on rocks. Look, those Nova guys, they love their rocks. They, they do. sit on them all day. To be fair, though, if you haven't watched that final uh, from the Nova Open, where Paul's, Paul's just like, I'm going to do the unexpected and put it's my Y-Wig on this rock. It's something. You look at it, and you're just scratching your noodle as to why he could possibly do it. And then two turns later, time proves him wise. So He flies the hell out of those Y-Wings. It's sad too. Uh, our, our our Lord and Savior Alan Fung had a very similar list. Yeah. To Paul. Uh, Paul went with a uh, Braylon stress hog instead the, of the real yeah, stress the, hog. The, the dual directions stress guy mm -hmm. Braylon, as opposed to the the stress hog Y wing. But uh, decloak, decloak. That's what those reminders are there for. Are you still cloaking backwards? That's interesting. interesting. Probably be able to do like a two bank and get Whisper in the fight here. Well, Whisper, I figured, Whisper's going to start doing some serious work if Graham's going to get back in this game. I would figure that being behind the bomber would be a great place to be, even with Quick Draw. Quick Draw would only be shooting at range two or three, and that's just a two die attack. That's not going to do anything to Whisper. 
There's the academy setting up the block. Okay, so Lucas has essentially removed Valen's ability to enter the fight against um, Quick Draw or Tomax by blocking him there. And if Graham is going to um, do anything with Valen, he'll have to go after Sabak. There's the the hard one, and the key maneuver on you the. You said it, man. Uh, you can't barrel roll. No, I'll probably focus. Take roll. Focus. Just, yeah. that, just that extra dice mod. No trick shot this round. No. Nope. But trick shot did work last round. Did work uh, for him. I hear rolling well helps too. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Rolling. Uh, rolling very uh, well definitely helps. So we've got a three interesting. turn. Interesting. Interesting call from Graham. Uh, we're gonna mark the tie and try and get him out of the way and see if Valen clears this three turn here. The third head that you saw, by the way, folks, was actually Prototype Toronto League Season Six, last season's uh, Grand Champion, and this matches uh, official judge Aaron pa Aaron P. Yeah, Emperor Poppenhausen, as we call him. One of the three founders of the league, and yeah. just a stand-up human being. Absolutely. And also Dave Grohl's doppelganger. But I mean, I thought Dave Grohl was here for I thought he was Dave Grohl. Yeah. I thought I, Dave Grohl is part of this X-Wing leave. Yeah, awesome. it's, it's, Aaron's just his, uh, you know, his side identity. He oh, wants to play okay. X-Wing. Yeah. But, uh, so interestingly enough, uh, we got Valen clearing that, taking a target lock on Tomax, giving him the free evade with the title. Uh, we got Tomax moving before quick draw. I love that one. Yep, I love yep. that one forward Lucas has. Monday night fights. I wonder what happened to those guys. They were uh, a YouTube channel, MN MNX, and uh, they were based out of I don't know Southern Ontario somewhere, and they just sort of stopped uh, uploading content uh, a year, a year or something ago. Well, I mean, in the last six months, the number of communities that have been populating the internet with content has started to grow exponentially. Oh, this is an interesting choice. Oh, okay, he's not target locking; he's barrel rolling. That's some. That's sounds like a, a solid idea to avoid going over the rock, since none of these guys are Nova members. They don't. They care about rocks, is what I'm saying. Yeah, they don't want to hit rocks. So. Right. Right. <laughs> bold strategy, got. <God>. Yeah. Bold. <laughs> Plus, quick draw was in the way, so yeah. Ooh. He's gonna go right in there and just. So now Valen Rudor's only target is Quick Draw, who is right in front of him. So Quick Draw's gonna shoot, pick up a target lock on that boy Valen. And while well, he's got one life, probably blow him up. Quick but draw, if he doesn't blow up. Quick draw basically just wanting to punch Valen Rudor right in the feelings. I mean that's what this game is doing to Graham, I think. Graham right is, now. Graham is just on on his dice point. I mean, I have actually got to the point on the weekend when focus, Gra Graham, focus was in, uh, Graham was in Syracuse. I believe he actually broke the laws of math, because I think he went 0 for 7 on his black market slicer tools at one point. That's, that's like, rough. He was just like... The, now, it is a dice game. Now, see here, a whiff from Lucas. Now, that's... He needs to chastise those dice. That's okay. what we expect from Graham, something average completely roll. average. Hit evade. Uh, it's just a. Uh, uh, spend the evade and die. Yep. It's a dead, dead Valen. Dead Valen. He does get the Pormen action from the grave. I imagine that might be to cry like a little girl. Just give the middle finger action. Yeah. Okay, no, so he's we still got Fell's Wrath. Fell's Wrath might have been able to shoot back. <laughs> Why don't we see more matches with Fell's Wrath? Then? Look, Valen Rudor is no Fell's okay, Wrath. Okay, we got four hits from Whisper. Whisper Ooh, doing Look at that. Here. Shooting at Quick Draw. There we go. Who has no lightweight frames. Oh, and, and the shields are gone. And the shields are gone, and Quick Draw's ability is no more. Yeah, yeah. So. That's fair. Yeah, there you go. Graham must be excited about that. That is, you know what, honestly? This 40 point, this 45 point whisper at PS9 now has to solo that whole list. And you know what, Devin? I gotta I, say. I think Graham's got it in him. Out of all the people that know how to fly phantoms, um, like Lucas is no fool. He'll, he'll be able to yeah. close a trap on Whisper. Yeah. But all of his ships are pointing in different directions, though. I don't know if you noticed. He is definitely out of position. Yeah. Um, it does give Whisper. Though he has eliminated, I believe, 65% of Graham's list. He's 65% of Graham's list. For, this is true. For half of Quick Draw. Yeah, half a yeah. quick draw. But I mean, quick draw is almost like having an additional ship in your list, right? Yeah. With his pilot ability, being able to take but damage and gone. shoot. It's, it's gone. gone now. It's gone. So Lucas He's almost essentially lost a ship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Now, and Graham has a great position with Whisper. He can decloak essentially in any direction he chooses. I mean, even if you want to go lollipop down the... Sorry, lollipopping is when a phantom does a two uh, sideways decloak and then a hard one back in the direction that they uh, came from, forming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, little, a little lollipop. Yeah, like a little candy cane. Candy cane. I should have said candy. I said lollipop, didn't I? I mean, you did say... You said lollipop <laughs> several times. Now. I must have uh, been looking at the candy jar. It's my fault. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, if anybody has a chance in this match, it's uh, it's Graham. He's an excellent uh, Phantom pilot. Already sealed players. Now, uh, well, face to face games, holding one of their wonderful uh, Magic the Gathering events. Yep. So many, so many hobbies. So earlier, time. earlier today they had their Pokemon Club for the youngins. Oh, yeah, yeah. Youngins. Yep. All the little, uh, all the little gym masters. Yep. I you, draw lots of were, cards you play, were you a Pokemon guy when you were younger? I played Magic when I was young. Younger? All yeah. Right, cool. I got into Magic, oh, 97. Wow. 97, Tim. I yeah. was... Uh, I started playing... Grade 7 in 97, actually. Yeah. Yeah. As as was I. Yeah, there you go. But uh, my first set was the Dark. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's, uh, I, play, I, played, uh, I played a little bit of Magic when I was done. And you, you know what? Even, honestly, in my adult life, there's still some friends who I'll come over and, and play a little bit of Magic with. I've always been more of a... I got a, I got a dotty deck. Kick your ass any day. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I've always been more of a, an esports kind of guy. Like I love um, oh, StarCraft yeah. and, and, and those kinds of games. For sure. What was the highest ranking you ever got on StarCraft? The highest rank? Yeah. StarCraft um, 2. What was your best league? Uh, I did make it to Master. You made it to Master? Master in one league. It was that is a league. solid, solid uh, finish there, bud. Well, thanks. I mean, StarCraft is a great game and, and uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to visit South Korea when I was traveling yeah. with my wife because it's actually the only country in the world that has a video game as their national sport. My god. And South Korea it's it's, it's, it's Star Starcraft. Starcraft. The original Starcraft. They're not huge fans of Starcraft too. No they are actually yeah I went to uh, I went to um uh, Gangnam, the, the the actual like suburb of Gangnam, right? And there was a, a filming of the GSL. It was actually like a, a top tier nice. GSL match being filmed, and, I, and my wife was kind enough to nerd out with me for a day and go That's watch amazing. it. That's amazing. And it was just watching these guys. Their brain just moves faster than the rest of us. It's just something to watch sometimes. It's kind of like watching um, Lucas or, yeah, yeah. or Heaver or or. or uh, or Eric or any of those guys uh, play X Wing. You just see them. Paul Heaver. Like he's on. Like I've played Duncan Howard, and I, you can sort like thirty percent of the time he does something wow. Yeah. Paul Heaver. It's just it's like watching someone who can see the Matrix. Like it's it's uh, well, a little knocked, special. Howard knocked me out at, Cana at Canadian Nationals last year. Yeah, yeah. And it was his Suntier and his Quiz and his Palp Shuttle versus my Double Ghosts. Yep. And he actually told me he was. Dr dreading playing me all day, which I don't understand because <laughs> he just flew circles around me, and then my ghosts went bye bye, and I just tilted and said, "You know what, you win." Uh, he said the, he said the same thing to me about my swarm, and then and then did not engage, uh, and uh, I lost. It's a mind I, game. He's uh, filling much, you with a false sense of confidence. Much like playing <laughs> Alan Fung, uh, the really great players will never go for Howard in a swarm. They'll stay on the sides. They'll pick off the ships off the edges of the swarm, like uh, like the weak. On the edge of a herd, and then all of a sudden you'll just have like three ships against their entire list, and you'll be like, "What happened?" For a perfect example of this, watch round one of the Atlantic Canada, <laughs> Atlantic Canada Regionals from last year. Okay, uh, that is the opposite of what happens in that match because nothing <laughs> dies. Pete Smith's insane level of patience until he finally just picks off a lowly Re tie fighter. Patience or refusal to play the game because I'd beaten him. I was undefeated against. World's two-time champion Pete Smith, Star Trek for Star Trek Attack. Yeah, Star Trek Attack. I was champion. undefeated against him. Until we had quite that match. the roster go down to the states over oh, the weekend, boy. and we was just, uh, you know, a, a great shout out to uh, to Steve Cameron and the uh, and the guys at uh, Cascade Games who put on just a magnificent event over the weekend. There we go. Very conservative move from uh, Graham. So the planning phase was a pretty good one here because Graham needs to decide uh, pro target priority and Lucas needs to decide how he's going to try and form this trap. So we've had the decloak from Whisper. Uh, given the direction that Graham has decloaked in, he's either going to uh, come about and take on somebody at range two or three, or he's going to bug out and try to go around that rock. I reckon he's probably just going to turn and fight because Graham's no... Uh, he can probably kill Quick Draw. Oh, you can't do that, Lucas. You gotta back up a little more. I would be shocked and amazed at that barrel roll. Of course it's that, gonna fit. Oh no, I meant the one like front, like oh, no, no, next, next to Sabak. Yeah. Now he can he can 
One good shot, quick draw's gone. One good shot, Tomax is winged or wounded and eating all sorts of damage. So got an same with same with, uh, same with then, Sabak. So uh, maneuver one four. Looks like Sabak is going to eat a rock on this turn. Yep, they're tricky. They're tricky ships. Any ship that has a multiple step uh, maneuver is really tough. And uh, Pierce Sabak takes a damage now. This confuses many of my opponents, Lucas not even knowing where his ships are. Uh, but Pierce Sabak needs two damage cards. It is, uh, if you've taken one or more damage cards. So giving uh, uh, Pierce Sabak something like a hull upgrade is completely counterproductive. If you give him a shield upgrade, it would work quite well. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Or you run him cheap because he takes shots and goes boom. He does take shots and go boom. Yeah. Uh, glass cannon. I like zero point upgrades. I like, to, to be honest, I like uh, adaptability. Political 7 is a good place to be these days. Uh, adaptability on uh, on him is a good, solid little decision. Yeah, that uh, top ranked Dash Rendar Poe player at uh, at Syracuse over the weekend had a VI Dash at PS9 with a with a PS9 Poe. Good God! It was a uh, yep. Graham's turning in. Yeah, so Graham's going to turn in. He's going to get a chance to actually negate Pure Sabox, uh pilot ability for the following turn because Lucas has opted to. Um, disengage with Quick Draw and Tomax, and then come out probably lining up for um, a Proton or Big shot, big shot, now. four damage. This might be a dead Sabak. He doesn't get a lot of evade dice. He's got no actions. He has no shot. Okay, that's, that's three go through, three, and that, that looks like a dead a, striker. Yeah, like I was saying, any any one good shot on any of those pilots is is deadly. Well, it goes, back, it goes uh, back to what we were saying, Devin, about not counting your opponent out of a match yeah. until. It's done. Uh, yeah. I mean, in two turns, Graham has, has been able to negate the pilot abilities of two of Lucas's ships. So I really think we got ourselves a match here. Yeah. And I'm and I'm calling it right now. I'm calling the Hero Academy tie with a flanking uh, range one a shot. flanking bump. I'm, I'm going to get a flanking bump or a flanking yeah. range one shot on Whisper f uh, for yeah. like two damage. A range one shot onto Whisper. I, I, I struggle to see... I'm imagining a three bank in towards Whisper or a hard three with a barrel roll, uh, but I'm not really sure where that academy is going right now. Now we've already commented on Lucas's interesting and creative use of uh, fire control and targeting synchronizer. Let's talk a little bit about De Dev, uh, sorry, Graham's uh, Whisper loadout here, shall we? What are the advantages of having both sensor and hotshot copilot? Uh, it's a very expensive Whisper. It's a very expensive it Whisper. Just, it it can serve to preserve MOV yep. into something that is just tanky as hell to kill. Um, you could, we were we were talking that you know you could be running an expertise uh, gunner whisper to make it you know. Well, that's lovely. Almost the fifty I point never, never fifty point like ship. That. that is lovely. Sounds sounds terrible, but what he's doing is he's stripping tokens from his enemies before they shoot, with except hot for shot. quick draw with hot shot. Anybody shoots a whisper, they got to spend their focus. Yep, and then that's sensor jammer. So I shoot at you, I yeah. strip your focus token on yep. defense, you shoot at me, and I immediately turn one of your hits to an eyeball result, yeah. which you no longer have, and you can't re-roll. Right. So I'm both offensively and defensively punching you in the feelings. And if you shoot Whisper before she shoots you, you have to spend, before she's able to shoot you, you have to spend your focus on offense. Now, it's, it's important to note as well for any of the viewers just tuning in, um, that quick draw has initiative so yeah. quick draw gets to shoot at whisper before whisper can cloak but because of hotshot co-pilot has to spend his attack on on offense his focus on offense you got it yeah but i mean stripping the focus yeah stripping the i mean like quick draw has fire control system as well so the the, the actual potential for uh a shot from quick draw target lock focus before whisper can shoot is, hard three uh, barrel roll very powerful move from the tie fighter Oh, not the direction I expected. I didn't That's expect probably that based on uh, the direction that uh, he decloaked. Luke is going in for a bumper uh, just to cause maybe one or two turns of, uh, of, of messing up Whisper's plan just to try and get his other two aces in position. So here's Tomax Bren, slow rolling. He's probably going to pick up a focus. And then maybe we'll see. Uh, Trying for a target lock and failed. Yeah. Great little trick for rookie players. Don't yep. forget, you can. It's a failed action. You can try for a target lock. You can do something else. There's certain cards that you can do failed actions. Um, an example of one you cannot is that do. A sloop be, there, Tim. I think that is a sloop. Interesting. A rare maneuver for a ship that can shoot out its butt. 
Yeah, but quick draw is not backdraft. Quick draw prefers to be shooting forwards. I was I was very negative about its two attack dice at the back very earlier. Yeah, fair enough. So quick draw well earlier. out of range, so it looks like Whisper can go ahead and take just an unabrative, uh, uninhibited shot against Tomax. Unab unabated? Unabated, yeah, there it's you go. It's just, that's four more dice. It's got... Graham's been on point. Yeah, range three. It's a killer. Oh. oh, it looks like Graham's red dice finally gave out on him. But now he's got to spend the focus. Yeah. So Tomax has no mod shooting back. That's Academy ties range three obstructed. Yeah. So Graham's probably just going to do a hearty Range two obstructed, you know. I think. Yeah. Uh, again with this? <laughs> look, look. Uh... When, uh, uh, glare on that bottom one, looking like one hit, two hits. Gambler's fallacy. Got to, got to keep uh, a winning streak going. Look, gonna have to spend the spend focus. the focus. Well, he's got no other shots on him. So. Well, the academy tie is doing it. Looks like that quarter's going back to you. All right, we're we're dead even. To we'll have to call. Uh, we'll have to do another call near the end of the match here. Uh, That's a big old whiff from the yeah, academy just, tie. Yeah, eight nothing, but eight not Oh. Graham just trying to see if his defense dice are in feed, indeed broken. Um, looks like they are. And he spent the focus. Yeah, it looks like he had to just to take. Uh, I think we're at the end phase now. That was the last shot from the academy tie. So now, um, quick draw has initiative, but the furthest green maneuver that the tie SF can do is what a three forward at this point. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's got tie mark two. So, um, I don't think a three that three bank right now would be pretty nice. But all he has to do is put guns on Whisper, yeah. and he generates that target lock. Lucas getting and really he doesn't have to be to see if that uh, two bank from Tomax would fit. Yeah, Lucas definitely qualifying as one of those. Uh, what does Aaron call them? The denim cool kings of X Wing in Toronto. Yeah, just guys who you play against you. you, you Odds are you're probably not going to beat them, but when you're playing them, you don't feel like they're, you know, um, just curb stomping you like Gears, Gears of War or something like that. They're actually just, you know, t helping just you. Just good learn. guys. Yeah, yeah, just having fun playing. Uh, you know what? That's all the, all pretty much the entire Toronto community is just a bunch of really good guys. Except that jerk Alan Fung, man. Every time I play that guy, look, we've we've talked to him. I don't think there's anything we can do about his attitude. <laughs> Uh, no, folks. Uh, if you haven't actually ever made it out to a, a proper organized event um, and you're thinking about it during the summer, we've got the PTL open less than a month away that you can give a go. April but 23rd, there's gonna 22nd. Be lots of, there's going to be lots of kid events, too, happening at face-to-face -face or dueling grounds. Store champs start in May. Uh, the, uh, I'm sure the PTL flying squadron, the crew, is going to be jumping around all the GTA, hitting up all these little stores, yeah. which... Uh, Appreciated, not appreciated by the local guys, but... Uh, or if you're out east of the city, don't forget to hit up Brew Wizards in Oshawa. Those guys are all yeah, really cool yeah. out there. If you're out west of the city... They've got a Twitch stream. they got a Twitch stream up every uh, every Tuesday you want to watch those games. From Brews? Yeah, yeah from cool. Brews. And we had uh, some of the guys from Flint's in the KW area come down with us on the bus to Syracuse in the Yeah, they got a couple of those guys made top 8, top 16, so... Jamie Conley. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we had... Uh, Cameron Cameron Murray did Cameron Murray did very well yeah. with Chewy Miranda. Um, with Chewy Miranda. Chewy Miranda. Yeah. You know he, he flies. He just hashtag flies. Hashtag Chewy hero Miranda. Wookie. Hashtag hero Wookie. Yeah. <laughs> That's commitment. He just flies Chewy Miranda. It's an annoying list though. Oh my god. It's it's like trying to nail Jello to the wall putting down. Did he have draw their wookie. fire on Chewy? I forget his exact loadout this time because he changes it all the time depending yeah. on what the meta is, right? But he's been pretty consistent with the. Uh, with Chewy Miranda going into it. I'm thinking a three bank and he just takes a target lock. Yeah. But if Quick Draw dies, means that uh, means that he's not shooting at oh so interesting enough, in maybe interestingly enough, Tomax has opted to take his own target lock and probably just try and Oh you're right, it. I didn't notice that. Uh, to Tomax is probably gonna try and just uh, punch Whisper in the face with a with a proton torpedo. He's got two mods there, right? He can turn an eyeball into a crit, and he can turn a, uh, a blank into a hit. Yeah, you don't need much more than that when you're rolling four dice, to tell you the truth. And it's a... Uh, oh, I was going to say, it's, it's proton. Basically, yeah. basically, if you roll two hits, you're, you're golden. Um, and that's average. The real question here is, will Whisper be able to do some serious damage Ooh. before Tomac? The uh, off-not-seen maneuver from a Whisper, hard three. Interesting. 
attempt. Uh, Graham might be going to kill a quick. Very brave maneuver is the way I'm going to label that. Yeah, Graham might be thinking to himself, you know what, I have a chance to kill Quick Draw here after Quick Draw shoots at me. Would you not want to barrel roll into range one of. Uh, oh, that's baller. Just going to throw the focus in there and. and uh, so Whisper is going to take a range three shot from Quick Draw. That's three dice on three dice. No mods on Lucas's end. We'll see how he rolls. And he just rolls like a god. Uh, just sensor jammer is the one. And unfortunately, it looks one. like Whisper might have to spend her focus token here or take a damage and risk dying to the proton torpedo from Tomax. Very tough. But decision. he'll be cloaked for the proton torpedo. True. But and if Whisper hits when she shoots, she gets another focus. Very true. Very so. true. Tough call from yeah. Graham here. Um, just going to consider it for a second, folks. And this is one of those moments in a game of X-Wing that you shouldn't rush yourself. No. no. Oh, there you go. Spends it. Spending the focus token, opting for the unmodified shot on quick draw, which is looking like it's just See, paying dividends. All the practice early today rolling his dice. They finally caught up. He's celebrating over at the table. Graham doing a little dance there, and that looks like a possibly dead quick draw. That's two damage. That's uh, toasty. Yep. Pop. Now we're going to see if the uh, the gods of karma are going to come back and punish Graham for his uh, ballsiness. Focus cloak. And we got a range two, so we're going to opt to spend the proton torpedo shot here. Um, interestingly enough, that uh, Lucas actually can't afford extra munitions. This is his only proton torpedo. So we've got an I mod. He's coming. already spent extra munitions. He's already shot one. Who did he shoot the first one at? He blew up Omega Leader. Oh, that's right. Of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so Whisper rolls like garbage. Um, gonna spend Got the focus. two evades. Looks like she's going to take two shields. Uh, oh, and actually, no. What am I talking about? Uh, Lucas only got three results, so it looks yep. like just the one shield result. No, uh, two shields. From Whisper. Yeah. No, yeah. L Lucas rolled two eyes, uh, uh, one hit, and one blank, so he can actually. That's probably the. That's pretty bad for a four die roll. Mm -hmm. um, and Tomax is going to crack shot it, and, uh, there you go. and then you get the two damage through. So that's what we were waiting for. Uh, Lucas remembering his crack shot. Um, just remembering crack shot in general. And the Hero Academy, look at that. Look at that. We got two hits from the Hero Academy here, possibly killing Whisper. Uh, and we got two evades. I know that feeling. So Graham's that's a, actually that's a dark feeling. Graham calling out the fact he's actually finally rolling a wiggly result. Uh, hasn't rolled too many of them so far in this game. Nope. I've been there. Yeah. It's usually why I fly BCXs, so I just don't get disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they don't have greens, then you're never disappointed. Exactly. Yeah. Such an interesting turn coming up here. Both players in positions to basically take the game uh, one way or the other here. Tomax, no damage on him. Uh, I suspect that Graham's going to decloak up board and do that little candy cane down. Do you think Graham is ballsy enough to K-turn Whisper here? Just two forward K turn. I've, I've seen him do it. You know that puts him pretty far out of the fight. That's a, a total of a range five, which is uh, five movement, right? I would be very surprised if Tomax <laughs> could get Ark on Whisper. If Whisper actually did a two forward four K, I don't see two him. forward. No, that's seven movement. Yeah, but that's almost two and a half yeah, range. So Whisper would be like you know near near the rock on the yeah. top left hand corner of the board there, but I don't think. Tomax would have art because Tomax can only do a two hard, which is red, or a three hard, and I suspect we'll see a five K from Tomax. <laughs> you reckon? Yeah. I mean, the other option Graham here has is he can he can candy cane uh, towards the board edge, right? Because Graham's gonna get to decloak, and that is the direction that the bomber cannot go. The bomber cannot go to our right. Don't forget, though, if Tomax blocks the Phantom and the, and the Academy tie goes in there like a hero and does that range one, that's three dice versus two dice. That's a, that's a difficult, difficult situation to set up. Okay, so we've got both missiles spent from um, Tomax Bren. Lucas essentially spent all of his tricks and trades, with the exception of Tomax's infinite crack shots. Uh, and it's a shieldless whisper uh, against two two die ships. Boy, howdy, what a match, eh, Devin? Mm hmm. This is. Uh... Okay, we got a good to go. We're going to do the plan planning phase is concluded. We're going to start the activation phase, and Graham is opting to decloak. Now, the important question of which direction? Yep. 
Upboard, it's hard one. Because the, the bomber can't go slow, and he can't turn towards the right. Bomber goes slow, he bumps. Uh, if Lucas K turns the bomber to get behind Whisper, it's not a terrible idea, but uh, we got five straight from the Academy tie. There's your Hero Academy. Going in for the block. Makes it. Look at that. Almost like he's played this game before, Devin. Uh, I feel like that's the, the vassal math, seeing the Matrix. So anybody who's new to X-Wing who's not familiar with Vassal, Vassal is a computer program that allows you to... Oh, there's the barrel uh, for your block. ...simulate games of X-Wing and play online against your friends. Um, I, I, I can't get the bloody thing to work. I've, I'm, I'm, I keep inviting Alan to come over to my house to show me how it works, but he's such a jerk, he never comes over for di I have like free dinner, yeah. like a glass of scotch, just can't get him over. He just says, like, I don't like, I don't like your face and I'm not coming to dinner. We got a 5K from Tomax. Now, yeah, I didn't expect the five forward from the academy. I expected him to slow roll a little more, but uh, we got a block. So one of the disadvantages against playing in a community is if you play against a player long enough, you kind of start to anticipate some of the things that they're going to do. I suppose. Um, now, there's an entirely real possibility. There's some ways that ships just fly. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's an entirely real possibility that Whisper could actually make this one turn. Aaron, uh, Aaron gets in there just to make sure that this is done properly. Uh, we got the one turn coming down, and then... That's what the league boss is for. Okay, no, so... There, there's no way that clears. Uh, Sorry, boys. I don't know. That back corner is looking that, pretty no. bad. Yep. We got a bump here, folks. So we're going to train track that and see how much... Uh, no, that's Whisper. something good that came out of Vassal. That's how the guys on Vassal were uh, solving the their problems. And they so what incorporated this, it right in the game. What does this mean for Lucas, Dev? Uh, this means Lucas has got a range 2 shot from Tomax with no mods and crack shot. So if he rolls well and Graham rolls mediocre, he's pushing a damage through on Whisper. And Whisper's got two hull. So... So Tomax is not going to be, or Whisper's not going to be able to cloak. No, nope. Whisper doesn't he get to can't shoot. shoot. Sheet, but go on. Whisper. Fair enough. Here we go. Uh, That's not okay. what you want to see. One hit from Tomax. Yeah. Nope, just an eye result. Nothing. Big nothing. fat nothing. And you know what, folks? I have to say, this example of what's just happened has to make one of the reasons why this game is just so much bloody fun. Because oh my gosh. you can put all the timing and all the prep and all the strategy and tactics into a turn like that. You could read your opponent's mail, know where they're going to go, yep. set up a kill box like that. And at the end of the day, sometimes it's a dice game and you, it just doesn't go your way. And Look, it, Tomax it, is stressing himself, flipping around, shooting at stuff. Like, it makes sense that there's, you know not a 100% chance that that damage is going through. And you know, it says a lot about a player when they get to a point, like at a turn like that where it's happened, is do I get frustrated? Do I give... And I know I've been there. I've, I've gotten really aggro at, uh, at people before just because my dice are bailing on me. And you get to that point where you think to yourself, you know what, I'm just not going to let luck determine whether or not I'm having fun while I play. Absolutely. And, you know, the, he's got control of Whisper at this point. He can... Uh, Turn the academy up board, right? Bell roll back in with a hard one. Well, I mean, uh, Lucas at Lucas, some of that direction. Lucas has every possibility of doing the exact same all over again. I mean, if he if he does a green maneuver with Tomax forward to block Whisper again and gets that academy three K behind Whisper, then it's 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 one more turn without the crash. That shot. that'd fit. Um, yeah, I think Graham's pretty limited as to where he can go. I think he's got to come down between the two rocks. And I'll get a, a bank and cloak and you know pray. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens. If Graham can land his maneuver, yeah, the difficulty will be deciding whether or not to stay put or to shoot. Now I don't know if you knew this or not, Tim, but the uh, the Phantom has an extremely similar dial to a uh, to a Tie Fighter. So they have all the great Tie Fighter moves. They've got the one hard, the two hard, the three hard. So he could be doing that as well. He could be coming down board. You know, does the Phantom have two K turns or just the four K? I don't know. I think it's just a four. I'm pretty sure it's just a four K. There, Lucas is. Uh, Lucas is doing the green two bank to clear yeah. that stress and see, banking on Graham going forward between the rocks, or blocking him with. Uh, I think that maneuver blocks all of the turns. To be honest, I think Lucas called Graham trying to bug out here. Yep. 
Lucas just continuing to anticipate where Graham's going. But he's only going to be taking a unmodified range two two die attack from a uh, from a tie fighter, and no crack shot, no mods, and a sensor jammer. So the tie fighter is essentially rolling one point three dice. Time to see if this academy tie gets moved to the head of his class. There, Devin. Answer is no, Tim. This is not going to do damage. All right, we got sensor one hit. Sensor jammer, no damage. Sensor jammer, no damage. Okay. And that's what Sensor Jammer does. So Graham's Whisper continuing to prove to be about as slippery as a greased up deaf guy. Hoping that there's a few family guy friends out there and nobody takes the best of that. But I'm going to go with it. <laughs> it's better than my Letter Kenny reference in the last one. No one got that. Pitter patter, let's get at her. What a great show. Oh if you haven't watched that show, oh my, oh my goodness. I know. I peed, my, I, I peed my pants after watching that first that first I episode. I got cousins that could be on that show, <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> well, you are from Ottawa. I, I don't know what to say. Ottawa, up the valley, huh? You know, it's it's one of the folks that we haven't called out from the weekend. It yeah. Was, um, Danny LaBerge and yeah. Guillaume oh, and all the great Clark. guys from the Bytown Smugglers. They even made it yeah. down to Syracuse as well. Yep. Just the Canadian invasion, make it the largest organized X-Wing event yeah. to date in North America. I, I, I figured between the guys from Oshawa... The 30 of us from Toronto, the, the guys that came down independently from Toronto, right? Uh, VG and his crew came down at 9 o'clock at night. Yep. Uh, the guys from Ottawa, the guys the, from Montreal, the guys from uh, Kent, Niagara that came down independently, and and Burlington that came down independently. I think we're close to 40 or 50 Canadians down there. I think we were close to half the field, if you ask me. No. No, that's true. We were 260, 260. 260 and a generous, a generous amount of Canadians would be 50. All right, so let's call it a third of the field. That's not how math works. I don't know. Let's ask Alan how math works. No, no, Eric's Eric's the one to ask. About Eric's the one. Uh, He's a statistician. The statistician. A chocolate, a chocolate statistician. The chocolate statistician there. Absolutely. The chocolatier of math. Interesting decision here, uh, Dev. Do you take the defensive evade or focus token, or do you, do you just cloak if you're with, if you're whisper? He's got he's got nowhere to go if he cloaks or decloaks. He can't decloak forward. He can't decloak left. I gotta agree with you. I think cloaks the wrong move uh, here. There you go. He's gonna barrel roll to avoid arcs and. What did we say earlier? The, the most reliable defense dice are the ones that you, you don't, don't have, have to roll. To roll. Exactly. Yeah. Just straight up haul. There again are the the decloaks on his uh, fingers. Not very useful last few turns, those reminders. Uh, one of the things we definitely need to do is uh, have our reliable streaming mate, uh, Victor from VWTV Live, run over and tell our players that they only have under 12 minutes left in the round. Um, we're coming to the last portion of it. There's a five minute extension. Oh, there's a five minute extension. through the game, they had to move some furniture, so. Okay. I'm gonna be adding five minutes at the end of this time. So if anybody didn't hear that, uh, we got the clock uh, counting down on the top of the screen there. We're at 11 minutes and 39 seconds. We are gonna be adding a five minute uh, extension to the map, which gives our players 16 minutes and 35 seconds total to play. Exciting end game here, Devin. Um, Absolutely, and this is where the forty-five point whisper really comes into her own. Right, because right? both of uh, Lucas's ships together add up to forty-three. Forty-three. Now, now if this were a, that's how math works. This is that's forty-three. So if this were a normal whisper and she was forty-two points, it would be tied. It would be tied. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> it's not how math works. <laughs> well, so Callus instead of Hotshot Copilot and FCS. Instead of sensor jammer, cuts four points off. So it's a forty-one point. Whisper. So it's a forty-one point whisper. So Lucas would be winning by one point. Yeah. If Graham had not loaded his whisper, and he could just run. He could just run. Yeah. But because Graham has such a fat whisper, not that I want to call whisper fat, but you know she's running to forty-five points. Now. She's not thin. She's four points over. So what we normally see. So. It means that he has to fly more aggressive. He's got to get in there and he's got to punch harder, right? He's got to finish her off. One of the things I love about our community, though, Dev, is that, you know, I, I, I can honestly say that it's been a very, very long time since I played a match against somebody who, who realized that with 15 minutes left in the game, you know what? 
I'm winning by a few points, I'm just going to run all my ships away. I mean, there's a difference between strategically disengaging and yep. making your opponent come to you in the late game and just blatantly, I'm going to run towards the corner and, 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 you know, try and run the clock out. Absolutely. I don't think I'm genetically able to do that. That I sounds just... like something the Ottawa Senators would do. Oh, now, Tim, now you're hitting me right in my heart. <laughs> There it is, there it is. Oh, no, oh. no, not a... I was hoping not. I would see one Whisper K turn in this right, game. Right, right, I think that that's... Graham probably knows at this point that he's ahead. If, Why? He, re if he remembers that Whisper is very expensive. Well, to all of our viewers who aren't um, super awesome, uh, you know, up-to-date on all of the different ships in the game, and given that the meta really hasn't had much of a place for Phantoms recently, Deb, why is a why is a K turn on a on a on a Phantom so risky? Well, because it prevents your free actions with Whisper. So Whisper, after she shoots, she gets a free cloak with AC the advanced cloaking device. And if she does and, damage, she gets an eyeball. And if she does damage, she gets a defensive token. So you want those actions, and if you're stressed, you can't perform free actions. Now she would be able to take the defensive focus token because it just says a sign, but she wouldn't right. be able to perform a free cloak action, so her agility right. would only be two. So you want to double those? You want to double your evade dice there, right? Yeah. These guys are moving uh, through these turns pretty quick, I guess. Uh, uh, Graham's getting ready to make his last stand in the corner here, realizing that uh, he he's not going to be able to. Um, now setting up for the joust here, and as as we pointed out, there's five extra minutes on the clock, so we're actually at about 13 minutes left. You know, uh, setting up for the joust is definitely in Lucas's uh, best interest. But as he just pointed out, Graham, as you can see him pointing at the board, Graham can joust or Graham can run. And uh, he's got to figure out this round. You know, Lucas has to guess which Graham's going to do. Well, Lucas masterfully has been able to get both of his ships back into formation uh, in the late game like this and set up probably the worst thing for Graham because the fact of the reality is is that Graham cannot yeah. PS kill one of these ships. He can't, unless he's amazingly lucky can, in shooting that TIE Fighter. He can one round a TIE Fighter and he can put so much damage on Tomac's Bren that that he... Uh, right, but Tomac says six hull, which means then you got to take which two means shots he's going to be showing crits. Yeah. Right. You'd have to take two shots back. Uh, you would have to um, get incredibly lucky with your shot against the TIE Fighter. And it's interesting to choose, it's it's going to be interesting to see what target priority Graham goes with here because I, I'm a, I'm of the mind like do you try and delete the Tie Fighter do you try and put some damage on Tomax? Um, we're in the semi-final cut of the league at this point, so points don't matter anymore. It's just about defeating your opponent and moving on to see uh, who's going to play. And then we've play. got a we've got a jousting whisper. Okay. Now a hard three would have gotten her closer and maybe out of arc of that tie. Yeah. Yeah. Not telling Graham how to fly. But the hard three, I love it with my TIE Fighters. And right. You talk about bringing them back in formation, you speak as a Rebel player mostly. Okay, we got some a, scum. We got a range two shot on the Academy TIE from Whisper here. He's going to attempt to delete it. TIE Fighters are so maneuverable, getting them back into position is a dream. Okay. Uh, so now, he's rolling dice is, like a god. Yeah. And, um, well, he's been practicing all game, getting them, uh, warming them up. Just took a while. And then the TIE Fighter is going to have to spend his focus token regardless. Uh, that is the perfect hotshot co pilot result. Because despite, um, despite uh, we can't see that. We That's can't not see that. It's too much clear. But despite the Academy tie not rolling any focus results, hit, no hit crit on Tomax Bren. Oh, it was on Homax. Interesting. Uh, and again, Tomax has to spend his focus because even if you roll no focus results, Hotshot Copilot makes you spend your uh, loose stabilizer on Tomax. Oh, and he rolled the two focus results. Oh, so disappointing. Double focus results again. If only there was no Hotshot Copilot. Doesn't he have a, a focus token on the Academy? Uh, he's shooting the Academy now. Okay. So that's one hit. And then Whisper cleanly evades. Yeah. So that Sensor Jammer that's Hotshot Copilot paying dividends in the late game here for. Absolutely. Uh, for Graham here. What a corker of a match we got on our hands. It just hands, keeps eh? that, 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 that piece alive. You know, Whisper on no shields. He got the shields off her, right? But, well, it uh, stands to reason here, uh, Dev, that if Graham wants to go in and try and delete one of those ships, that he's going to need to take a range one from the other one. But he can afford a range one from an Academy TIE pilot. And Lucas has to try and guess which way Graham's going to decloak here. He has all the decloak options in the world. Yeah, sorry, we got uh, two damage on Tomax Bren. The overlay is just going to catch up in just a minute. The Academy. Has there we go. Touched yet. Gotta say, the uh, the quality of the VWTV overlay has just been getting better and better ever since uh, Nationals. Just fantastic. 
very excited to have them out helping out with the open. Yeah, well, they stream. don't just do X Wing, do they, Dev? Oh, they do uh, Destiny and uh, Netrunner. That's the other FFG game, and yep. uh, Imperial Assault. You guys haven't figured out how to do Armada yet, though, eh? Yeah, oh, yeah, they've done Armada they've too. They've done Armada too. Yeah. Uh, if you're across the city everwards, uh, Vito TV Live along with PTL and a lot of the other uh, hobby game leagues meet at lots of different shops. we got face-to-face -face in the East End. If you're downtown on the subway line, there's uh, 401 games on Wednesday nights. And, DG uh, on Fridays. Dueling Grounds at Dufferin and Bloor on the uh, Fridays for some of the um, folks who love the West End. I know I'm a West Ender and I love Dueling Grounds. It's a great experience. But, uh, yeah, interesting, both players having to think fairly conservatively about what they're going to do here. I think Graham's probably figured out what he's going to do, but Lucas is the one here who can basically... Uh, well, if he sets up another block... I really think it's Lucas's Home game Ex to lose at this Home point. Home Brand survives. No, it's Graham's game to lose now. I don't know. Lucas can really do some damage to Whisper if he gets it right. Nine minutes left. Whisper can bug out. You know, she's so maneuverable. She's moving after both ships. Did you it's adjust tough. the clock, or is that 9, or is it actually 14? It's adjusted. Yeah. It's adjusted. Yeah, so we've Victor. had the clock adjusted, and we are at now uh, 9 minutes left in the round. So the other semifinal match that's going to be going on sometime next week is between uh, Jeff Alan and Allen. Jeff and Siri. Um, I haven't had a chance to pull any of their lists. I know that both of them have used fair amount of aces and uh, named pilots at this point. So They're both Imperial Ace players. They are, yeah. um, at heart. And it'll be really interesting to see what both of them come up with for their match, because yeah. neither of those two players are going to underestimate the other, so you're definitely going to see them bring in their A game. Okay, we got the D cloak D going. Oh, oh. Well, way to go, oh. Graham. Oh. Uh, DQ'd. Definitely. Light your, light, light your torches, grab your pitchforks. Look at that. Some sausage fingers there. We should talk to not the, the direction the I thought local he was judges. Go. Not the direction I thought he was going to go. To tell you the truth, well, 4K uh, from the Tie Lu Fighter. Lucas probably thought he was going to go forward and try and. Mm, it covers a lot of ground. It covers the D cloak forwards and it covers the D cloak left. Fair enough. Lucas got a nice little box here. Yeah. Expecting Whisper just to do that one turn and be right in the kill box. Maybe. Is that a two turn? Oh, yeah. And, and Graham playing right into Lucas's hands again. No arc on Tomax here. So he's going to be able to delete the TIE Fighter. But then he would Cloak leave. Cloak focus. Yeah, but then he would leave Tomax with a modded crack shot option. Range one. Do you barrel roll and shoot at Tomax, or do you, uh, do you delete the TIE Fighter? He's going to barrel roll and shoot Tomax. That's what's happening. There he goes. Go big or stay home, right, bud? Hey, you know, five dice on two and cloak up. Gives him no offensive mods on both of his ships. Not a terrible decision. Let's see how Whisper does. We got one result. No, that ah, not that's what you tough. See. That's tough. And we got spending the focus because it's Hotshot Copilot, yep. so no damage on Tomax. Yep, it strips the, the, hot, the Hotshot Copilot, strips that focus. Right? There I we mean, go. He's cloaked, so and, but he didn't hit, he didn't get a focus. Range one from Tomax, we get one becomes sensor a focus jam for one hit, and one evade, crack shot, one damage. Yeah. Hero TIE Fighter, right here. Well, I'm not going to say I called it, but, you know, if the Academy does pop Whisper, I'm definitely going to say that I called it. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah. So, we got, boom, range one. Hit sensor crit. jam. Oh, sensor jammer for uh, one crit and cleanly evaded. Oh, some howls of relief coming from the other side of the shop there, Devin. For sure, for sure. Graham is very excited to have lived. Graham has got his whisper in just an absolutely perfect position to continue the assault that next turn. Uh, with, if he decloaks up board and then Candy King's with back. With six minutes left, that's about a round. I mean, these guys are fast players, but. Uh, Luke is considering his options here. I mean, you yeah. get 5K Tomax, but how much help is that really going to be? You're starting to see a little of the frustration of having to deal with Whisper these last few rounds. And he's he's expertly been bumping and trapping and setting up those kill boxes. It looks like four times now, if I'm going to get it right. So with, with a bomber and a TIE fighter, that's hard to do. That's respect the flying. But uh, it Luke, just shows Luke how is hard. a tremendous player. I mean, the, the control he's had getting his ships back into formation and yeah. keeping both guns on them at range one or two each turn, it's not I mean, easy. That just shows how difficult it is to deal with a big whisper and the way that she keeps, just keeps stripping the focuses and staying alive and and hurting his uh 
his offense with with the sensor jammer and the hotshot copilot. Well, that's just, the thing about the just phantom. something else. If you didn't show up with a stress bot Y wing or a shadow caster, that phantom is going to be a pain in your zip me up. It's going to eat you. It is not a friendly uh, ship. If you didn't bring stress mechanics or something that can shoot at PS9 or 10, yeah. uh, that thing is not friendly. I mean, Fen Rao shoots as many dice as it does at range one, but the Phantom is insanely more maneuverable. Lucas going, well, focuses don't matter. I'm just going to bomb in. You know, I can't spend them. I can't use them. I mean, it's nice to have a defensive focus, but... Uh, but he's just going to strip it with a whisper, I He's just going to strip it anyway, so... Definitely for seeing a one hard turn to the right from Whisper here at this point. Uh, yeah. Aaron yeah. just adjusting the... Uh, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering if they were going to catch I, that. Yeah, I thought we were going to catch that as well. <laughs> Emperor Poppenhaus is not letting that one through the cracks. Yeah. Oh, that looks like a dead TIE fighter to me there, Ted. That is not a friendly looking TIE fighter. Or do you just eat the TIE fighter and shoot at Tomax? No, I think you definitely take the TIE at this point. TIE's got one. Five dice is a lot of dice there. TIE's got what, one damage? No, TIE is unhurt. Well, TIE is unhurt. He has survived. We need some paint from the five dice here, and that is a lot of paint. Oh, there. that's a... Oh. Do we have a cock die call? That's oh, uh... Nope. Not calling it cock. That is five hits with some critical damage in there. Uh, that's one a... Of that's, a that's four damage four onto damage. a three hull TIE fighter. My, uh... uh my That's what happens to TIE Fighters, they go boom. My, my hero TIE Fighter has yeah. did not make it. You know, when people ask me, one of the reasons I like to tie, fly TIE Fighters, I'm like, there's nothing more Star Wars than TIE Fighters. Either oh, them screaming in in an attack, or... We got one hit. Whisper could... Uh, she's fine. Well, she's that's three fine. of eights. Three of eight results. Five with the focus token. Unfortunately, until Max Bren did not bring. Oh, five, and five, 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 Lucas has. Lucas is actually going to concede at that yeah, point. Three minutes left. That sensor jammer is you just could, not going to be in. You could see him sort of getting really frustrated there at the end. And, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what happens sometimes in your games. You just tip your king and you yeah. congratulate your opponent. And it looks like Graham is going to go on uh, yeah. to face the winner of Jeff and Alan next week.